Uh, our forecast for the developing Europe and Central Asian region uh, for the period between 2011 and 2013 is of an economic growth of around 4.5%, which is smaller than what we observe in other emerging regions, but this must be kept in comparison to the very significant economic contraction that the region observed back in 2009. Now, in terms of the tensions that we uh, may observe may impact uh, ECA, uh, the developing uh, European Central Asian region, we have the questions which are coming from the increase in energy prices, which affect the, in a differentiated way the oil exporting and oil importing countries in the region, and also the continued turmoil that we observe in high income Europe. This has a significant potential for pass-through into uh, the ECA region because of the very significant uh, trade linkages between ECA and high-income Europe and the integration that we have between the financial systems in high-income Europe and the ECA region. Okay. The risks that we have for the outlook on ECA and those risks are not only downside risks, there are also upside risks to the ECA outlook are related, for instance, to the development in terms of oil prices. Uh, roughly 60% of the GDP of the ECA region is produced by effectively oil exporting nations, which implies that in a situation of growing and increasing oil prices, those oil exporting countries have an upside risk in terms of the uh, growth performances, which has implications also for the oil importing countries in the region because of the interlinkages via, for instance, remittances, etc. That, for instance, uh, is the case for uh, some countries in Central Asia and in the Caucasus. Now, uh, another risk which clearly is more on the downside uh, potential is the ongoing tensions that we observe in some parts of high income Europe which are related to the fiscal sustainability in countries in the euro area. You have a potential for a pass-through of those tensions in ECA, which so far has not been observed because of the strong linkages that we have between the ECA region and high income Europe via trade, investment inflows, and also via the interpenetration between the banking systems of those two regions. <music> Uh, similarly to what we observe in other uh, developing regions, there are policy challenges which are related to the need to tighten monetary and fiscal policies now that we have exited from the crisis period and we are in a more sustainable growth period. Legitimately, what happened during the crisis is that countries used both their fiscal buffers and their monetary tools to avoid an even stronger economic contraction. Now that we are in a period of uh, more stable growth, what the countries in the region should be doing are stronger steps towards fiscal consolidation and a control of inflation. In other terms, a reconstruction of the fiscal and monetary buffers that we had in the ECA region before the crisis struck. <laughs>